Hello, and welcome to Bandstand, the official podcast of the Tennessee Bandmasters Association. I'm your host, David Adelit, and I hope you'll join us on a journey through the past, present, and future of bands in Tennessee. We'll delve into the rich history of Tennessee bands, uncovering the hidden gems and legendary figures who shaped the state's band landscape. We'll survey the present, where you'll meet the movers and shakers of today, gaining insights from their expertise and experiences. And we'll gaze towards the future, exploring the exciting possibilities that await Tennessee's school bands. On today's episode, Reggie Coleman and I conclude our conversation with Reese Gardner Herring from Arlington Middle School. We discuss recruitment and retention, as well as a number of other topics. We hope you enjoy part two with Reese Gardner Herring. If I can swing back to the hard thing, talking about middle school to high school, and I'm pretty sure every middle school program has like an eighth grade night or like a high school band night where they go to the high school. And I think that's one of the most important things when you're talking about moving kids from middle school to high school, Um, Mm. because myself included, I thought that there was no way in the entire world I could ever do a marching band film show. Like it wasn't in my brain. I had, I mean, the idea of marching and playing my instrument and doing all those things seemed literally impossible. And I think that I have integrated seventh and eighth grade classes for my um, concert band and my symphonic band and my percussion class. It's all seventh and eighth graders. And so they're in that band with those kids for a year. And they're like, oh, well, so-and-so is out there marching and playing their saxophone at the same time and doing all of those visuals. And they went to BOA this year and they did all those things. And so it puts in their head, like, there's no way I could do it but they said the same thing last year. Like there's, they said yeah. that there's no way yeah. they could do it and they can do it. And I don't know. I usually cry every night at band night. They make fun of me, but I just let them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I just make fun of me. I'm an emotional girl. It's okay. Same. It's okay. But my, my kids are like, Mitchell Coleman, are you going to cry at the concert this year? I'm like, like no. <laughs> and they're like, cry. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Well, let's talk about, we've talked about recruitment. Let's, let's shift into retention a little bit. And some of these things that we've kind of talked about, uh, we'll cover some of this, I think, but I want to go back over it. Truth be told, it's always recruiting season, right? So how do you retain the students that you already have? So I think the, 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 the most obvious one, right, is that do they trust you? Um, do they know you? Do they trust you? Do they think that you have their best interest in heart, you know? And then have you made band this time worth their time? The first thing that came to my mind, um, I like to not take concerts too seriously, like my winter concert and my spring concert. And that may rub some people the wrong way. And I don't mean that we don't rehearse seriously for those concerts. I mean that for concerts where we're not being assessed, like at festival or we do a music in the parks every year, like their winter concert and like their spring concert, I like to let them have a say in the music that we play. Now, it's kind of like guided guided opinions sure. and guided decisions. I'm like, here's five pieces of music. Let's listen to them all. Let's play through them all. And which three do you want to commit to rehearsing on for the next four weeks? And they usually pick like Polar Express or they pick, you know, something that's that they want to play. And I think that them having that somewhat of an autonomy in their concerts is a huge recruitment thing. Now, the festival music, they know that, you know, that's a more important performance. I'm going to pick the music for that. Veterans Day, um, Arlington's a really big military district. The Navy base is right here. Um, Veterans Day, I pick that music. That's a serious performance. But on, you know, like the December concert, it doesn't have to be super uptight all of the time, super, you know, strict classical music. Like, sure, if you want to play Polar Express this year, let's play Polar Express. Um, There's still a lot of learning things that can happen in that piece of music. And then they take pride in their decision to play that music when they do it well. Last year, we did um, a Christmas carol where they got to pick a teacher to narrate the Christmas carol while Mm -hmm. they performed. And they thought that was just cool. And it honestly, in my opinion, it was one of the coolest pieces that we've done for a winter concert. And so instead of saying these are the three pieces that we're playing for the winter concert, I'm like, okay, it's the winter concert. I've picked five pieces of music. I don't care which three we play. 
let's rehearse through all of them for a couple of days and we can vote as a true democracy, which three do we want to play? And so letting them have some kind of decision making in essentially their band program is important for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same thing with the spring concert too. Um, the spring concert, it's at the end of the year, it's after testing, it's after festival, it's after music in the park, it's you mm -hmm. know after recruitment. I mean, it's like, why am I going to fight them and tooth and nail every day to rehearse music that I could just give them five pieces of music and let them choose the three that they want to rehearse for whole weeks. And then there's no fight about it. Yep. These are the pieces that they chose. And they have a lot more motivation to rehearse well and practice and play well when they kind of have decisions of their own. And they don't realize that it's guided decisions. And that's the smart thing about it. Yes. They just think, oh, yeah, we got to play The Incredibles this year at recruitment because we chose it. We chose The Incredibles. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, but you also had the Disney medley and all the other things that I picked out. Um, but they just don't know that. And so it's kind of like strategic planning on my part. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I, I think that that's one of their favorite parts of the year, picking pieces for their concerts that way. I'm going to sound old and salty when I say this. I think band directors sometimes, and it's well-intentioned, they inject things into their programs that give kids things to complain about. Mm -hmm. You know, and my, my advice would be to try to remove as many of those obstacles that might create, uh, Nick Saban would call it rat poison, I think maybe, to create, yeah. to, to get rid of all those things. Like, what are the barriers that might be there that maybe you're implementing that's in the long run, you're not going to get the, the uh, return out of this decision that you maybe thought you were going to. That is something that I'm definitely going to still, I last in December, we did a project at the end of the year where um, they didn't bring their instruments that day. It was just everyone was supposed to bring their laptops. And I typed up this assignment for them. They were going to learn how to navigate pepper and they they had to go to you know like very easy or easy. I can't depend on which which group it was, whatever. And even the sixth graders got to do this. And you know you can go to. I gave them like three, two or three categories of types of music. You know you have like like the the popular styles and the concert piece and the festival pieces and all. I can't remember what all I told them, but then they were able to just spend the whole class period listening to music. Uh, pieces that they liked, they were interested in, and they each submitted, like, on a Google form, like, three pieces that they want to play, and they had to say who's the composer, um, and, you know, why they liked it, and that kind of thing, and uh, we are 100% going to use that to program our, our spring concert, um, and, and I'm really excited about that. And I know that some of them are going to be like, we well, didn't pick mine. It's like, yes, but, you know, now I've got it on my list. You know, maybe we're going to buy it. And even if you don't get to play it, someone after you is going to play it. And how cool is that, that you, you know, were able to you know, mm -hmm. contribute. Give something, you know, we contribute, right? Yeah. And, but I love the, the idea of just like saying, all right, here we go. Here's five. Let's pick three. And I think that would be yeah. a, this is just, it was like a fun week. <laughs> you know, it was like a fun week in band class. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of like, I have to remind myself all the time because this is my life. Like bands, my life. I've played piano since third grade. Like it, I take it very seriously, but at the end of the day, most of them are not going to be band directors and it's not going to be their entire life. Like it is mm -hmm. mine. And at the end of the day, and it's, it's an elective for them. They don't have to be in my room and I want them to enjoy the time that I do have with them and them allowing me that eight weeks of extensive rehearsal time for festival. They call me boot camp gardener during the time of year that we are in right now, the boot camp gardener and their boot camp class. And we're boot camp for festival because I want them to be successful. And it always comes back to, I want you to be successful and I want you to feel prideful and proud of the way you rehearse Such and, great it worked, and you are successful yeah. in your concert. And because, you know, we were so successful, now you have some autonomy to choose an, on a less serious performance, you know. And last year at my um, <laughs> spring concert, my eighth graders decided that they wanted to play Prehistoric Suite again, which was one of their sixth grade <laughs> band pieces. My, my and, eighth graders will be playing D Dragon Slayer this, uh, this yeah. spring. <laughs> I was, 
I was like, have I lost my mind? Like, I'm really going to let these kids play prehistoric suite. But it took less than half of a class to rehearse because they they played that in sixth grade. It's very easy. They had the most fun playing prehistoric mm-hmm. suite. And I was like, I think maybe I've lost my mind. But that's going to be something that they remember. They were like, as our finale piece, Miss Gardner, we want to play prehistoric suite. And they had all kind of like banded together at that point. And so I was like, well, we only have one week of school left. We have, you know, four more rehearsals until our spring concert. I guess we're going to play Prehistoric Suite as our fourth piece instead of three, whatever. I don't care. And, you know, it's like I put the moon in the sky. They were so thrilled about that. When these eighth graders were sixth graders, um, I told told them at the end of their, uh, they, they played Anasazi, John Edmondson, and um, Dragon Slayer, Rob Grice. And I said, you know, when you're in eighth, in eighth grade, on your last concert, you get to pick, you get to bring one, you get to pick one piece that you've played any time, and you get to bring it back. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, what do you think is going to be? How many do you think is going to be on Ozzy? You know, no hands. <laughs> Even though I love on Ozzy, and I always will. And um, then, you know, say, oh, I think it's going to be drink, demons, uh, Dragon Slayer, you know, all of them. Okay. And so, uh, and they never stopped playing it. They have, and I'm sure they just never stopped playing Prehistoric Suite. They've been playing it this whole time. They're ready, the, you know. The trombones. <laughs> That's right. The trombones, the sonos. Oh yeah. It, it, haunt, <laughs> it haunts me. <laughs> the, it's, it's the cow. It's the it's the it's the break drum for me in Dragon Slayer uh, that I can never get out of my ear. But they are they they came into this year like, hey, you know, we get to play Dragon Slayer. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. I'm. I'm they Don't worry. We can work on it the day before the concert. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. That's something I've had to learn as a teacher is that because I'm not a parent. And so I just, kids never forget anything that you tell them. And that was that I have had to learn that the hard way a few times and had to mm-hmm. keep my word a few times. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. Teaching middle school is my favorite. Well, you have to balance. I think both of you guys just listen to you talk. It's I'm just, it's it's exciting to hear you talk and uh, your approaches, but in order to have that, like, what do you call it? Boot boot camp gardener is that right, Reese? In in boot camp gardener. Yeah, and and Reggie, you talked about trust earlier. It's it's a little bit of brick and mortar, right? You have to have a mortar, a culture that holds all the bricks together for the wall to have strength. You can't yeah. you can't have one without the other. All right, they have to work together. So having high standards. This is something Ollie Liddell talked about in one of our earlier podcasts. In order to have high standards, you have to have a great culture within your band program. You have to have a culture that mm-hmm. where the kids support each other, where they know they're cared for by you as the teacher. Is there any more to talk about with this? It seems to me like so many people think you have to pick. You know, you have to either be the fun person or you have to be the straight person. And I know sometimes I struggle with which one to be at what time. But I you can be both (laughs) you can be both as long as you know when to be which one and your kids know when to be which one and it sounds like reese like you got your kids know exactly when it's time to lock in and when it's time to let loose and i just want people to know that it's okay to have fun at school (laughs) and it's also okay to have high expectations at school and you just got to make sure you're doing it the right time Yeah. And I don't want you to think that it's a perfect plan because there are many hard days and there are hard rehearsals and there are days I come home and I'm like, oh my God, I don't think that they're enjoying band. Like, I don't, they don't seem like they want this anymore, but you know, they always, they're resilient. Kids are like sponges and you, you have to steer them and remind and bring them back and remind them, you know, you know, you're going to meet them at that end goal and you're the hard days, you're going to have hard days. It's a life lesson in the end. Like no one in their whole life is not going to have a hard day, but you know, I'm going to come back tomorrow and you're going to come back tomorrow and Mm -hmm. you're going to get your instrument out again tomorrow. And we're going to try again tomorrow. (laughs) And you know, you may not like me today, but I still love you always. And I may not like you today either. And you may not have been able to stop talking today. And I had to email your mom, but I still love you. And I emailed your mom because I want you to be successful and because I want your peers around you to be successful. And a lot of times they, they meet me and they apologize, you know, and they're like, I'm sorry, Miss Gardner. I made, I made a bad decision. And 
I was, you know, in, immature today, but I'm going to be a leader tomorrow. This was, mm -hmm. this was not a reflection of me. I'm always like, I know it wasn't a reflection of you. This, you know, this is forgiven. At the end of the day, you're 12 and you're a 12 year old boy or you're a 12 year old girl. And I did not enjoy when I was 12. So I understand that you're going to have bad days. And I always, Dr. Wynn, actually, he told me this when I was in college or he told the ensemble this when I was in college and I use it all the time during boot camp gardener season, which is, you know, January to March. And I always say great bands don't make selfish decisions. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like our motto during these six weeks is great bands don't make selfish decisions. So don't make the selfish decision to not do the dynamics because you want to play super loud. Don't make the selfish decision to forget your instrument or to talk during my ensemble. Don't make the selfish decision to, you know, make bad grades so that you can't go to festival because we need you at festival. Like make decisions that are for the good of the band. So that's kind of what we live by is great bands don't make selfish decisions. Like you're all, you all have to play. I need all of you to play your instrument. And I always tell them as, when we get on stage and we perform, I'm just waving my arms and looking pretty at that point. Like, this is you. This is your performance. So uh, it's what you make of it. So let's do it. I can guarantee that little bit. It's going to be an Instagram reel <laughs> for this podcast. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I can guarantee it. I just wrote it down. I saw Reggie over there like, where's well, my Dr. Dr. Wynn. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Wynn. Shout out, shout out Dr. Wynn. Shout out Dr. Wynn. He's probably cooking something amazing for dinner tonight. Uh, I never really taught middle school. I was just kind of a pain in the butt high school band director. So middle school directors <laughs> put the, you're laughing, <laughs> middle school band directors put the middle in music education in that journey. So how do you build strong relationships with on the elementary side and on the high school side? Um, so one thing for elementary school is, you know, I think so many of us, and you know, it's funny, I think middle school directors can fall into this too. It's like some people think there's some sort of hierarchy you know, there's high school, there's middle school, and then like way down there, you know, you have like elementary school. And it's just like, hey, guys, everything is difficult. Yes. Everybody is trying to make the best out of the situation. Everyone's trying to be great. Any, I'm um, sorry, any high school band director that thinks they're really smart, they should just go try to teach a first grade music class one day. Oh, and that'll be the most humbling, I am terrified. the most humbling terrified. experience of their lives. And those people that teach elementary school are, they do some incredible things. Carry on. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I always, I always reach out to the elementary school teachers around me, uh, especially like in that, in that March time, um, which most of them I know anyway, and we have a relationship, but if I don't know them, I introduce myself. I try to go out of my way to, run by the school and just say hello, you know, invite them to the concert because they want to see their kids. Um, and this year, what we're going to do is we're going to make videos. Um, and our both, both of our sixth grade classes, we're going to make videos and send them to the elementary school teachers and just to say, thank you. Thank you for giving us our start. And thank you for encouraging us to, to, to be ourselves and be great and to join band or choir, whatever they might have done, uh, and send it to their elementary school teachers. And hopefully their teachers share that with their students. Um, but I always think, whenever I see them, I thank them because I, whenever I, my students come up, they, they, they know what quarter notes are and they know what high sounds are and low sounds. And, um, you know, and, and, and I don't think about how difficult those things are to teach uh, until I'm trying to someone who didn't have that kind of uh, education tries to explain to them what that means. Uh, so yeah, I, I think reaching out and showing, showing them their, their old kids and letting the kids see them and just tell them that you're thankful for the job they do. And hopefully that will lead to, you know, perfect, good, good conversations and them lending you a hand when you need them, which is every year. Yep. Reese, you talked about you work band camp a little bit. So what is your relationship like high school wise? Yeah, I, I have a pretty good relationship with my high school directors. Um, I wish that I could be up there more often. Um, I'm a nine to four school and they're seven to two. So by the time they finish marching band rehearsal in the afternoon, I'm just finishing school. So our our schedules don't align, but- I'm sorry, know, Reggie's not over seven to two yet. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, needs a, yeah. Reggie needs a second. <laughs> no, I'm talking about nine to four. Oh. I can't. Four, not four o'clock is snap time. That's crazy. 
Carry on. I am hangry when I get home. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah, we're nine to four. But the high school directors, they come over and, you know, they talk to the high school kids. And we do eighth grade night. We do a band night. We perform at um, Arlington Open Invitational. We open up the award ceremony. We play national anthem. And so we do a lot of things with the high school kids as much as we can. We see them at All West and things like that. But um, as far as, like, integration of them into my program, the high school director comes over um, – as often as he can, sometimes it's once a week, sometimes it's once a month. And he just, he sits in and he's a set of ears and he's a set of eyes and he just wants them to see his face and um, to put a face with the program. Cause I always am encouraging them. I'm like, here are my kids. Like here's the high school band director. Go be free, go fly baby bird. And um, when I work band camp, I get to see them all come back and they hug me and they're so excited to see me. And um, then I can also kick their butt at band camp. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, why are you not set? Why don't you know where you're going? And they're like, Ms. Gardner, what set are we on? And I'm like, is it my job to know or is it your job to know? Mm-hmm. Um, but we kind of get to be that fun. I get to be the fun person when I go to the high school and work with them. And that's kind of nice because in my program, you know, I'm like for real all the time. I'm the serious one. And when he gets to come over and recruit them and talk to them, he kind of gets to have that fun outlet um, running them through rehearsal Oh, like, I don't know. I'm a believer in putting as many people in front of my kids that I trust as possible. Because sometimes, you know, when Mr. Simpson at the high school tells the tubas to play a natural, a second vowel, they'll actually do it. <laughs> yeah. And when I, t- when I tell the tubas to play a natural second vowel, they're like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And they don't actually do it. But just hearing something from someone else can mean something different to them. And maybe it makes an impact on them more if he's, he's in my room to tell them to do dynamics. And if I'm at band camp to tell them to get their life together, like it, you know, it happens. It's a nice little balance between middle school and high school. So good. I mean, it's really important. If you have K through 12, like as a music program, it's really a K Mm -hmm. through 12 program. It's, and and the more all of us can think of it that way, then the better off we're going to be. We're all part of the team. And, uh, I would encourage everybody that's listening to don't just do your job in isolation, but really understand the whole, the whole arc that happens with a kid learning to play an instrument. They come to my concerts and they run lights and sound for me and they help me do chairs and stands because there's one of me at my school and there's two of them at the high school. Um, so concert days are all hands on deck. Um, and I try to go up there and help as much as I can too. And so just hearing all of them, hearing feedback that they have at my concerts is always nice. They speak at my concerts to the parents at spring concert. They'll speak, you know, talking to the eighth grade parents, trying to, you know, make them more familiar with them uh, since they're going into the high school band program. But it even goes back to um, both of the high school band directors work by an instrument fitting in May. And they're meeting my fifth graders that are going to be sixth graders next year. And they're, you know, recruiting their future tuba players and they're both low brass boys. So they're recruiting their future low brass section and they take they take that seriously. And it's really something that I didn't have at my previous school. And that's one of the reasons why I came to Arlington um, was to have more of that community. Like I'm not alone in this kind of atmosphere. And I can even I mean, I can text them anytime and ask them any questions that I have. And I'm like, hey. When is this due? When do I need to do this? And or I forgot this SOS and they are there to help me. So that's really nice. You're both young teachers. You're both doing a great job. What do you wish you'd known before you started? I wish I would have known how important it is to be organized. I have never once in my life been a person who was organized. That has never been a word that you could use to describe Reggie Coleman. Um, when I was little, I went to this after school program. Um, and uh, I, would, I wish I remember the name right now, but I can't. But the the woman that ran the program, she's really old lady, you know, a little old lady. And I would forget my backpack at school or my homework at school. I would forget my backpack at the after school center or I'd forget something. And she said, Boy, you forget your head if it wasn't attached to you. And, you know, <laughs> that was now I, now since then I've heard that several times, but that was the first time I heard it, and um, she was right. I am that's just something that I've always had to work on some being organized, like and not just not just clutter right on my desk, right? I cannot I don't care about that. I know where things are; they're here somewhere, right? But 
like mentally organized, like with a plan, like we're hurt, whether it's for per- whether it's a rehearsal plan or it's a logistics plan or it's a meal plan, you know, like we'll talk like any of that, right? Um, that compared with the time aspect, which I'm cool with it, right? Right? Like, I mean, here, I'm, here I am at school on a Sunday, right? I'm recording a podcast, but still, right? Mentally, that's a weird thing. Um, and I think organization and the time thing kind of go hand in hand. And if you're organized, then maybe you got less time and to, to do things, or we have more time to do things, but less time spending at, after school and stuff like that. So I think if I just realize how important organiz- like basic organization skills uh and also you might be at school sometimes until seven even though rehearsal ended at four and you just need to be printedly prepared for that sometimes and i just wasn't ready for it at first but now i am reese i think i've always been a big question person i always ask questions i don't like to not know the answers to anything And when I went into my first year of teaching, I didn't realize how alone you actually are. Like you are truly by Mm -hmm. yourself. Um, And at the school I was at, we didn't have a choir or an orchestra. So I was quite literally the only music person. I was really actually by myself. And so there was a lot of loneliness in that. And there was a lot of like overwhelmingness that I felt that year as a first year teacher. And I think that the biggest thing is to find people that you trust that you can call after school and talk to and ask questions. Um, Because when I was in college or when I was student teaching, if I had a question, I'd ask it, I'd get the answer. And you can't, when you're by yourself and you're teaching a class of 50 kids, you're like, oh, I don't actually know the answer to that. I'll have to figure out the answer and get back to you. And so finding band directors and mentors that you can really lean into and for guidance and help Um, And humility during that time is really, really important. Um, Just last week, I texted one of my clarinet colleagues about a high trill on the clarinet. And I was like, is this really actually the only option for how they can trill this A? And she was (laughs) like, yeah, this is literally the only option. Um, There's no alternate fingering. I was like, okay, I'll just tell them that they're just going to have to toughen up. And that's what their choice is. (laughs) Um, Are you sure? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think there's this huge divide in band world, and I've really struggled with this. It's almost like people want to keep their doors closed. They don't want to help each other, and they don't want to ask for help, and they don't want to share resources. Mm -hmm. And I feel the opposite of that. I feel like I spent my time on this, and I've worked on this for five years. Here it is. Like, let me save you the stress. Because a lot of band directors don't make it to five years of teaching. Maybe if they had some help and some guidance and some mentors to rely on, maybe they would feel less overwhelmed. And here are my resources. Do you need scale sheets? Here's my scale sheets. Do you need instrument testing sheets? Here's my instrument testing sheets. Because I spent, I just was alone for many years by myself. And so now it's easier for me because I have all these things created. Um, And so just reach out and ask for help. Like whatever you need, ask for it. Um, but my band room's always open. I, I had a teacher this year. She came up and she spent the entire day with me and she just watched me teach the entire day, you know, and she got to see the good, the bad, the ugly, because every band room has the good, the bad and the ugly. And Amen. no one is perfect. And I think that people like to keep their doors closed and be perceived a certain way. And I'm like, no, I know that you struggle with intonation. And I know that your kids have to struggle with something. Tell me what they struggle with. <laughs> Tell me what, <laughs> what can I help you with? I need help with this, this and this. And so that humility, I feel like, is maybe something new that's, um, I would like to think some young band directors are hopefully going to be open-minded to. Um, because, Reggie, if you ever want to come to Arlington and watch me teach, come on. If I'm ever up in uh, the Nashville area, I'm going to call you Reggie. It, it takes years to get places and get programs, places, and to do things. And even me, like, there are days where I feel like I'm doing my students a disservice. And I feel like I, I'm like, they're not getting it. This is a me problem. And just, I take things very personally because I'm a perfectionist and I'm so passionate and I care so much. And I'd like to think that maybe that's, that reflection means that I'm going to become a better teacher, but I also just take things really personally. And there are really bad days where I'm alone, where I could just benefit from calling somebody and saying like, 
I have one saxophone player that I have worked with one-on-one for three hours and I still can't get him to tongue. Is it a me thing? What do you, what verbiage do you use to teach this? Because this is the first saxophone player in five years that I cannot get him to tongue. And I've spent many an early band session with him and I don't want him to get discouraged. You know, just that humility and that opportunity for people to have relationships and mentors, I think would be the best advice I could give a first year band director. That's outstanding advice. Yes. What can our associations do? What can Tennessee Bandmasters or any of the three grand divisions, TMEA, what can we do to help first year teachers? I think, first of all, I mean, I know that MTSBOA at some point was doing something along these lines, but having a list of people right? And obviously, this is like a volunteer list, right? Um, of emails and phone numbers, right? Like, hey, if you need, if you need help, like, here are some names you can, here are some places you can call, right? Or maybe it's like a mentor mentee system. I know that's really tough to keep up with. So maybe that's not the answer. Maybe it needs to be more broad, like just a list. Um, or, you know, maybe there's a special meeting just for just for teachers under five years or just for first year teachers. And it can be a virtual thing, you know, because places like East Tennessee, right. Or even Mills, Tennessee and West, right. They've got people, you know, three hours away from another. And maybe it's a meeting at the beginning of the year. Maybe you do three meetings, right. One of them beginning, middle and the end. Um, and then after that, who knows what comes with that. They could do something on their own. They might go meet up for drinks sometime, or they might go to each other's, bands and concerts and stuff like that but i think just getting the information out there finding who's willing to which is going to be most of us right i think uh who's willing to help and find all those first year teachers get them in the associations invite them to meetings um and give them a place to be themselves with each other right give them give them a place to express themselves with each other and maybe that's with the five and below years yeah. people um or something like that yeah just give them a space give them some ownership Okay, so I think that if every region, Middle Tennessee and East Tennessee and West Tennessee, would just lay out information, the same information for everyone, the same way across the same platform, it would be really nice. So that the young band directors, the new band directors, or even the old band directors who've been doing this for a while have the same opportunity to find resources that are needed across the state. Um, and the band programs, the small band programs, I grew up in rural Tennessee in a smaller band program. I was a part of like the first year of marching band at my high school, South Gibson. all the way up through these. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, South Gibson, all the way up to these huge programs, like, you know, all of the Murfreesboro schools, Sperna for Reggie and Bartlett and Arlington. They all know where to find the same resources and have the same opportunities as some of the smaller schools that are less fortunate. Um, or who are far away from, you know, Memphis or Nashville or the big hubs. And they're disconnected almost because they're so far away yeah. because Tennessee is such a long and big state. Is there a time for both of you that you realized I can do this? There have been a lot of times where I realized that I couldn't do this <laughs> or I felt like I couldn't do this. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know. I feel like every year, whenever I, my, I send my eighth graders to high school and I see how like upset they are to be leaving middle school. I didn't really have that experience. Like I was so ready to get out of middle school. And so every year when they write me letters and they are emotional at the spring concert and they're like, Oh, I love you. Miss I'm going to miss you so much. And I'm like, go be free. You're going to fly. You're going to be amazing. And every year that that happens, I think to myself, like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Now, all, I it almost makes me forget all of the times throughout the year where I'm like, oh my gosh, am I doing these kids a disservice today? Like yeah. did, today I wasn't a be the best teacher that I usually am. Today was a bad day. You know, it, it makes all of those really, really hard days almost forgotten. Just because you realize in those moments, like after they've nailed a performance and they have all of that intrinsic motivation, they're like so proud of themselves. They've been working so hard. And they think to themselves like, oh, this was amazing. I had the best time performing. I'm never going to forget this concert. I think to myself, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I was meant to do this. That's for me. Mm. It comes usually after a performance, you know, after six yeah. weeks of boot camp gardener. 
Yeah. Yeah. Reggie. Um, there, there are three times I point to and three times that I know I can do this to put like, like what we said to the, to the hundred where I'm like, maybe I'm not it, <laughs> Yeah. you know, but the first one was the, the first full year after COVID. Um, that was my first year being in the head position, right? I was, I was split at two different schools before that and the two years before that. So I was like never in charge of anything. I just showed up and did my job, right? And the, the, the day after all the kids were gone, uh, and after we just finished that first, that, that whole year, 2021, I guess it was 2020, no, 2020, 2021, I was like sitting in my band room by myself. And I was just like, I just did that. <laughs> I was like, cause we were in person the whole time that year. I was like, I just like, what? I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, okay, hold on. We're going to be okay. Um, and the the next time was there was last year was a time where we there there's a there's a home a, a realtor group in the area that does like a teacher of the teacher of the month I think thing, and I was teaching seventh grade woodwind or sixth grade class and some guy I've never seen before and this woman comes into my come, come to my room with my principal and they look at these big box of cookies and something else and I was like and I'm like I'm in my comfy clothes I am not ready for guests. <laughs> And I was like, hi, you know, and they were like, oh, you, we checked, selected you for this thing. And it was the kids reaction that got me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, cause I was like, oh, thank you so much. Like, I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate accolades and those things. Right. Like competitive person, I want to win, you know, but like, I was just like, oh my God. But it was a kid. They were like, yeah. It was like, take a, you know, take a picture and all this stuff. And that was, I was like, oh my gosh. And it was a, because of a, a letter, a parent from like two years ago had wrote about me and like nearly brought tears to my eyes. And the last one was our first year at CPA at our, our concert performance assessment, which was this last year as my first time being in charge of a group that went right. And the, the other director, he's on the he's on the stage and they're playing the the graded piece or the I can't remember March whatever, and I'm watching from the audience and I and I like you, Reese. I'm an emotional person as we talked about earlier, and like I'm like not okay. <laughs> I'm like crying. I'm like, what am I doing? Like I gotta go sight read in like five minutes. I gotta stop doing this, and but just seeing them on that stage and it was the same stage as that I performed on in college and they were all dressed up and they were just playing so well. And I was like, y'all we're, we're in this, like we're, we're really doing the things and we're about to go sight read and like, it's going to be awesome. And there, it was just a day where I realized like, all right, that. cool. Like we're here. We're going to be great. And we're going to keep getting better every day. And this is just the beginning. And it was very exciting and very fulfilling. And I think about that moment a lot. That's beautiful. Both of you guys, that was great. I'm getting chills listening to you talk. Okay, so Reese, I was snooping around your Facebook a little bit before because I've never met you before. Ooh, uh, same. Okay, hi. <laughs> I just got married. It's a personality trait currently. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Thanks, everybody. So you went to South Gibson. Uh, my wife and I, I are both really interested in how we can help rural band programs. So we both went to rural schools. Okay. Uh, Renee's from Lexington, West Tennessee, and that's where I started teaching. So what inspired you as a student? My middle school band director. Shout out, Emily Brown. Um, I only joined band, and I told Reggie this, but I only joined band to get out of my piano lessons. I uh, hated pianos. Very difficult. My mom told me that she did not waste her her money on piano lessons just for me to quit. So I joined band. And like a lot of band directors, um, when you have a student who plays piano, it's really nice if they'd like to play French horn uh, because it's a difficult instrument. So she, Emily Brown, she herself is a horn player. And so I ended up playing horn and I was really excited about it. And they both loved to hold it over my head that I didn't want to join band. And now I'm a band director. <laughs> uh, but she... She really took me under her wing. In my seventh grade year, I 
um, applied for a uni- for UTM honor band. It was one of the only honor bands in the area. It's only it's one of the only colleges in the area too, and I didn't get in, and I was devastated because I'm also a very competitive person. And I was like, oh, I can't believe they didn't select me, a seventh grade horn player who has no idea what she's doing, for this honor band. But one of the older horn players that were in eighth grade, she couldn't go for I don't even remember what reason. And so Miss Brown said, Reese, I want you to come to honor band this year. And I was floored, like could not believe it. I was beaming to get out of my house in the country. So um, I got on the bus and we got to pick up all of the other kids from all the other rural schools because we shared a bus because we were all super small. And I'm such a social person. I got to meet all of these other band directors and all these other band kids. And I got to go to honor band that year. And I sat last year for sure. But it was one of the best experiences of my entire life. And if she had not have said, you know, Reese, you're coming to honor band this year with me um, because so-and-so couldn't go. I don't know if I would have fallen in love with band as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, the next year I was in eighth grade and I auditioned for all West and I made it and I went to UTM again. And it, from there, it was just kind of like the snowball effect of, I want to do as many things as I possibly can. And even today I'm a yes person. I, uh, you want me on the podcast? Yes. You want me for one episode? Yes. You want me for 10? Yes. I'll be there. However many, like whatever I can do, you need me to come run your clarinet sectional? Yes. Um, I'm a yes woman. So I did as much as I could just to get out of my small town, like any honor band anywhere. I was there. I was never at school second semester. I don't know how Same. it happened. I don't know how that was legal. I was not trying to be at school. And so just getting out and meeting people who were so different than the people I went to school with meant the world to me. And she, Miss Brown, she came to my wedding in December. She means the world to me. She took me under her wing and she gave me private lessons for a lot of my middle school and high school life. And I don't even know if she would consider them private lessons because I would just show up to the middle school after high school and say like, hey, can I play my All West music for you? Hey, can you help me with my college horn audition? And she was there for me every single step of the way. And uh, that's kind of what I try to be for my students now, you know, with early Mm -hmm. band and with things like that. I'm like, Yes, you can play for me. Yes. And it drives me crazy sometimes because they want to play the same thing for me a hundred times. But I sit there and I listen to them a hundred times because she listened to me a hundred times and they could grow up to be a band director like me and love their, you know, love their career most of the time like me. And so she really was the defining factor in that. And so I auditioned to a bunch of colleges um, in the Tennessee area because my mom's a teacher. So I had to go to public schools to get that, you know, higher education discount. And, um, I ended up, I auditioned at Memphis. It was between UTM and Memphis. And Dr. Wynn called me. And Dr. Wynn was like, Reese, I know that uh, you may not want to come to Memphis. You may want to go to UTM. He was like, but you've been to UTM your whole life. And I love UTM. And I love Dr. Thoman, the horn professor at UTM, and Dr. Ulrich. And he was like, but you need to come up here in the city because you're never going to grow if you stay inside of your comfort zone. And so I ended up at Memphis and it's probably the best decision I ever made. And I was sitting in Miss Brown's office when we made that phone call and we made that decision. So she's a major reason why I'm a band director today, or she is the reason really. I love that story. Did I answer, Shout out Ms. Did Brown. I answer your question? Yes. Shout that out Miss Brown. Perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. Very good. Can you talk about your musical theater experience and what has helped you with that along the way? Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> You know, Here we go. <laughs> I told you I snooped on your Facebook. <laughs> so growing up, um, my mom was a teacher. She's also a single mom for a while. And while she was a single mom, she was a theater director. So I grew up around musical theater. Um, my sophomore year of high school, um, they released that they were doing auditions for Annie. I'm sure that's the one you saw. And I love Annie just a little curly redheaded orphan. I just, I don't know. I relate to that. I'm not even an orphan, but just the curly red hair. And so I was like, you know, mom, I'm going to audition for Annie. And my mom was like, yeah, do whatever. You're going to do it anyway. I kind of just did everything in high school and I auditioned and I got the part and it was unlike anything I had ever done before, but it opened a lot of doors because I started singing in choir that year. Um, and I started doing like the regional choir activities and I always, 
I'm a huge advocate for singing in bands. And if you can, I think that the best musicians can always sing. I don't know if I've ever met someone who's a good musician that is cannot match pitch and cannot sing well. Um, I think that comes hand in hand almost. And so it was a really good experience. It was completely out of my comfort zone, but it was one of the best things I did. And the next year I did the Wizard of Oz and I don't know, theater kids are a lot of fun. They're way less uptight than band yes. kids. Can I say that? Yeah, no, it's true. Time? My yeah. Renee and I have two kids and our, our oldest was a music major and our youngest is a, she was in band. Shout out Catherine. Shout out Catherine. And our youngest was a, was a band kid. And then her junior year, she goes, I'm going to be theater now. So she did theater and band her last two years. And now she's a, she's an actor. So it's a, it was fun for us to sort of, because Renee is also a band kid. So it was kind of fun for us to learn, you know, that, that world, because it's different and wonderful. Yeah. Reese, and if, the fun, go ahead. I just want to say, if you and I, if we were in the same area, there's a 0% chance we wouldn't know each other by now. You and I would be besties. Besties. <laughs> yeah. I'm a musical theater yeah. nerd, rural school, went to the big went to the big school, I was scared. Like, yeah. this is, everything is just like, I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, how have we yeah. not met yet? This is, this is beautiful. That's one of the pros about going to a rural school is that you can pretty much do everything. Yep. Like I probably could have played sports if I wanted to. Maybe not. I'm not that athletic. But I mean, there's just not a lot of kids. So, you know, you want to do choir, band and theater, they make it work for you. And those teachers, you know, they spend many hours outside of school. Um, they have a, a very difficult job. I mean, every teacher does. But um, the they, the advocation, is that a word? It can be. Can, okay. The advocation, the way they have to advocate for their programs in rural communities and honestly, inner city communities. I started teaching in Memphis. Um, it's very different than what I have the luxury, the privilege of having that I have now. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. And Mr. Price at South Gibson, um, my first year uh, of my freshman year, was the first year that we had a marching band with all four um, grades. So I kind of got to see that through. And now my brothers, they're in high school band and they're sophomores now. And they're just watching them be so successful is so rewarding for me, an alumni of the high school That's band. That's a good program. band too. South Gibson's um, a good band. It is. It is. So I take great pride in that also because I'm like, hey, I was there when they were building the band room and y'all are killing it now. You're doing amazing. So it's really cool. I love it. Anything else? I don't know. Just kind of adding to the regional situation, like the Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee, and East Tennessee. I think it would be so helpful just to have some like PD or some workshops on instrument maintenance. Mm. Because I have I spend so much time regularly fixing instruments or attempting to fix instruments. Try, and I'm a brass player, so woodwind maintenance I'm like if it's not a spring if it's not something super basic i'm trying to figure it out and i spend like my entire planning period trying to figure out why you know this is not working when someone who has that it's just having the knowledge yeah. when someone who has the knowledge can help you with that so i think that having professional development that's just going to make your life easier would be so helpful Reese, Reggie, thank you so much for being on today. This has been incredible. Reese, it's been so much fun getting to know you, and I look forward to getting this chance to meet you in person one of these days. It's going to be really exciting. Reggie, any final thoughts? I just want to say how grateful I am for Reese to coming on. Um, this is it's great to meet another young middle school band director, especially that's not uh, in Middle Tennessee, that's doing great things. And um, I look forward to the two of us growing alongside one another in our respective associations. And, uh, you know, one day maybe being on the boards of team EA and stuff like that together, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. Take over. <laughs> I like yeah. It. Thanks for having me. It was, it was so great to meet you guys and, um, talk with you and bounce ideas and get ideas from you and sharing thoughts and programs. And, um, I also look forward to meeting you in the future and, uh, Seeing you on the board one day, Reggie, you're going to be yeah. great. <laughs>
both of you guys, it's going to happen. This podcast is about creating connections across the state. I feel like we have gone a long way towards doing that today. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Bandstand. If you have topic suggestions or need to get in touch with us, email us at tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Your input is important to us. And if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss about the past, present, or future of Tennessee bands, please let us know. Again, that email is tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Right now, we're broadcasting on Spotify and YouTube, so please subscribe, review, and rate. Box 5, please. And more importantly, share this podcast with your friends. See you next week.